Hi, fourth graders, Mr. Holt. Uh, I'm back with another read aloud from the National Parks of the USA book. Um, we've read two of these um, pages or two of the sections about some of the national parks. We read one from the east, which was the Everglades National Park in Florida. We read one from the Midwest, which was the Big Bend National Park in Texas. Um, so I haven't been reading all of them. I'm only going to read a handful, and I, I'm probably going to read more and more as we get closer to uh, the West Coast and closer to Washington State, where we live, um, just because they're ones that are closer to us, and um, that's why. Um, from the Southwest, there are many national parks. Uh, many of them are um, in kind of a desert landscape in the Southwest portion of uh, the United States of America. Um, I'll read the page about the Southwest or the, the blurb here, and then I'm going to read the Grand Canyon uh, section. So this is the Southwest, many national parks. Many of the Southwest parks were founded for their bizarre geology. In other words, crazy looking rocks. Stone arches and skinny pinnacles stretch into the blue desert sky, higher than three-story buildings. The nation's largest canyon plummets more than a mile deep into the earth, and colorful, sparkly, petrified logs litter an old riverbed. These otherworldly lands can seem devoid of life, but lots of plants and animals find homes here. Sagebrush scents the air, and prickly pear and chola cacti bloom in colors as bright as stoplights. Lizards sun themselves in the heat of noontime, and coyotes and mountain lions prowl the night. Long before us, the ancients knew about the beauty of such landscapes, too. Discover the corn cobs, stone pots, and magnificent cliff places they left behind long ago. I'm going to turn to the Grand Canyon page, or pages. Grand Canyon. Floating on a rubber raft down the Colorado River, you hear a distant rumble. It grows louder and louder. Hold on tight. That's the sound of a white water rapid. Some of these waves are bigger than a small house. This powerful water makes a great roller coaster ride. It's also the force that carved the Grand Canyon. The biggest chasm in the country at 18 miles wide and more than 5,000 feet deep. You'll see many wonders on your 277 mile journey through it. A bright turquoise stream tumbles into the river. Bighorn sheep tiptoe across cliffs. Rare condors swoop above and cacti bloom in colors as vibrant as canyons. Look carefully and you might spot the stacked rocks and the square windows of a house built centuries ago by Native Americans. Yes, Grand Canyon State, uh, or Grand Canyon, uh, a couple of facts about it. The state that it, it's, I believe in uh, portions of it are in multiple states, but the majority of it is in the state of Arizona. It was founded in 1919. Uh, the size is 1,217,403 acres. And here's some of the plants and wildlife. A ringtail. Like circus performers, ringtails climb straight up and down cliffs, squeeze into tight spaces, turn their heads 180 degrees, and even do cartwheels. Springs and seeps. The canyon is very dry, but water travels deep underground. If you see an explosion of green plants on a cliff, you know you found one of the 600 plus springs where water comes to the surface. There are often special quiet places known only to wildlife and intrepid adventurers. Listen to the drip, drip, drip of water and the song of a canyon wren. Breathe in the fresh scents of the maiden hair ferns and the scarlet monkey flower. Stay still and you might spot birds taking a drink, shy frogs swimming about, or newly hatched tadpoles. Little brown bat. Bats are the only mammals that can fly. There are 22 bat species in the canyon, which has plenty of caves, cliffs, and old mines where they roast during the day. No, they roost during the day. California condor. I know it used to be endangered. I'm not sure about it anymore, but it used to be endangered, the California condor. One of the rarest birds in the U.S., the California condor is a scavenger and soars on an almost 10-foot wingspan looking for dead animals to feast on. Claret Cup Hedgehog Cactus. In spring, Claret Cup Cacti erupt in dozens of lipstick red blooms pollinated by hummingbirds. 
Invasive species, tamarisk. In the 19th century, Americans planted tamarisk to control erosion. Little did they know that this Eurasian plant would grow gang like gangbusters. It spread to rivers and streams throughout the West, slurping up precious water and growing so fast, it edged out the native plants. Now, now crews in the Grand Canyon uproot or kill tamarisk with pesticides in order to allow native plants room to grow. Uh, down here is some rabbit brush. Rabbit brush. Bright yellow rabbit brush is a very useful plant. Deer and hares eat it, and birds and rodents nest under it. Native Americans once used to make yellow dye, cold medicine, and chewing gum from the rabbit bush. Bark scorpion. The most venomous scorpions on the continent, these thumb-sized insects grab smaller bugs with their pinchers and sting them with their tails. A mama scorpion can carry up to 30 babies on her back. Wow. Bighorn sheep. Desert bighorn sheep clamber, clamber up and down rock faces that would make human beings shudder. The steep terrain is their hideout from predators like mountain lions. Mormon tea. Native Americans used to brew on, brew an energizing form of, I'm sorry, an energizing tea form this, from this plant stems and create tattoos from its charcoal. And lastly, caves. Scientists estimate that there are about 1,000 caves hidden in the Grand Canyon, but fewer than half of them have been explored. Already, spelunkers have discovered amazing treasures in these stone tunnels, like the mummified remains of extinct Ice Age animals and twig figurines left by ancient indigenous people. What wild mysteries might still hide in these dark chambers? That's it for the Grand Canyon. I'll read uh, more pages of the National Parks of the USA book in the coming days. Uh, enjoy your reading. Um, make sure you find the schedule for each week. And I uh, hope to see you on our Google Meets in small groups. And maybe we'll try a whole group on Friday. Uh, hope you enjoyed the read aloud. See you later, fourth graders.